Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. If you had been one of the disciples at the time when they were sitting on Sunday and wondering what to do, wouldn't you have thought that some of these events that are described were events which sort of reminded them of what happened a long time ago by then, two or three years, when Jesus first called the disciples? After all, you, get once again, you have a time when Peter is fishing and he doesn't catch any fish and they have the same thing happening here. Or another time when Jesus is saying to him and his other brothers, follow me, and that's exactly what is being said here again by Jesus and others. He probably thought to himself, Peter, that these things are strangely familiar. And indeed they are. But by now, now at the time, three Easter Sundays after Easter, by now they were actually not only thinking about what happened back then, but they were trying to figure out what they should do with their lives right then and there. You see, the disciples had faithfully followed, and I don't know whether you've ever had a low point in your life. My hunch is that most everyone in this congregation at one time or another, encountered a point in their lives where not everything was going their way. When in fact things were difficult and you would consider that to be a low point. I'm not going to ask you to share with me, <coughs> excuse me, your low points in your life, but just think for a moment, just take a five second sort of pause and think about a point in your life when nothing was going the way you wanted it to go. You probably have found a time. You probably have identified a time. And that is the time that we can recognize in this text because we are basically being told that they didn't know what to do. They were just sitting around. They thought they had seen, had seen Jesus. But were they really sure? And when you are in a position where you're not sure, and you're not sure what's happening, you may do the same thing that Peter did just to go fishing, to resort to his old ways of having meaning in his life. Or perhaps they were just hungry, we don't know. But we do know something about the text and from the text, and what we know from the text is that in times when we are struggling, we can be certain that Jesus will seek us out. Isn't it wonderful in this text? Here in the, in the 21st chapter, we read in the text that uh, just as the day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet his disciples did not know that it was Jesus. But the important thing for us to get a grasp of, to get a hold of, is the fact that Jesus doesn't leave the disciples by themselves. He seeks them out. And if you have difficulties in your life, or you have problems that you are facing, and we have faced already, and I'm sure that all of us will qualify, one thing that you can be certain of is that Jesus will seek you out. You might not recognize him. The disciples didn't recognize him. But Jesus sought them out. And it's important for us to know that for our life. That Jesus will seek you out. Because he loves you and cares for you. But he does more. We not only read that he sought them out, but when they had gone onto the, onto the land, there was a charcoal fire in place. Remember the sequence? Jesus says to the disciples, hey, why don't you go and fish over there? Or, or do you have any fish? And they said, no, strangely familiar again. Just when, they, when the disciples were called the first time, they didn't catch anything. And here again, they don't catch anything. And their heart and stomach are both empty. And when those are both empty, we don't make good decisions. We make bad decisions. But Jesus tells the disciples, throw the men on the other side. And they haul in more fish than they can imagine. 153 large fish. They haul in because Jesus not only seeks them out, but he serves them. Listen again. When they got out on the land, when the disciples did, they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out in, in, on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. 
So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. Wow. Can you imagine what was going through Peter's mind and the disciples? Yes, this is strangely an old scene. This is an old scene where, yes, I remember Jesus calling me. I remember Jesus telling me to throw the net out, and in a matter of a moment when I was obedient and said to Jesus, I don't think we're going to catch any fish, but because you say so, I will throw the net out on the other side. And they hauled in incredible numbers of fish. And so it is with us. You see, we not only recognize Jesus when he seeks us, we recognize Jesus when we serve him and when we are obedient. And the disciples were obedient. And they called in a fish, a number of fish that were just unbelievable to their side. So Jesus seeks us. Jesus serves us. But he does more. And Jesus also saves us. And now we can zero in on Peter. Because Jesus zeroed in on Peter. And he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter was sort of, of course I do. Well, look, Peter, there were a few things that you did just a couple of weeks ago which might make somebody question that you really do love me. So it's not a question that comes out of thin air. It's a question that each disciple had to ask and that you and I need to ask. And then Jesus says, Peter says, yeah, sure. And then Jesus says, do you love me? And again, Peter is upset that he doesn't seem to have gotten the message across to his Lord. He says, yes, I do. And then a third time. And then there is this interesting point. You see, Jesus seeks you when you need him. Jesus serves you. And Jesus saves you by asking you to follow him in obedience. And we read that. Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Jesus and Peter. And then what this is, but what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. He was once again challenged with the same words that he'd been challenged before. Now, what we have here is a picture of the calling of the disciples in the first few chapters of the Gospel of John and in the Gospels according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But each one of us, you see, has been called. We, David and George and Karen and I, went to the convocation, which was on baptism. In the Lutheran church and in most churches, baptism is viewed as a way of responding to the call of God. God calls us. God calls us to follow Him in baptism. And we may not baptize when the person is older, we may do it when the person is younger, and then the training comes in and we put some meat on the bones, so to speak. But what's really interesting to me is that not only are all of us called, but we're also recalled. Have you ever got a recall notice? I have a recall notice from GMC. It says safety recall notice. And they go on and tell about the defect in my car and that I need to have a recall. That's what's happening in this text. That's what's going on here. Peter has been called, so have all of the other disciples, and so have all of us here. But he needed a recall. He needed to be called again. He needed to respond again. He needed to know that his Savior was there seeking him, serving him, and saving him. And you and I need to know that. And that's why we have the assurance of the meal that Christ has prepared not only for the disciples at the Sea of Galilee, but has prepared for us right here in Sulphur Springs. The question is, when you've been recalled, Will you answer? Will you answer? Will you respond to the recall notice that Jesus gives us every day of our lives, especially when we can celebrate his presence in our midst? 